Hi everyone, and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie. Today, and yes, and today I have Brittany. Thank you. So today, uh, stay tuned, clear till the end, because we are going to show you a fun sneak peek of a new product coming out, and I'm sure you'll love it. So yes. today we're going to start out with the first of part one of cinch bags, because they can be a little bit tricky as well in the hoop. So we're going to do the first part of the cinch sacks today. Next week we'll do part two, which will be mostly flip how you flip those inside out as well as uh, inserting the ribbon. So to get started today, I have Brittany here helping me, and we are going to be doing um, the sweet sentiment, sweet sentiments uh, cinch bag right here. Mm -hmm. We're going to actually be doing this one today. But look how cute, there's so many others that we can definitely do. They're really cute cinch bags. And how fun for spring. If you've got this little thanks, maybe for Mother's Day, these cute for birthdays, or even just spring. Something yeah. fun for spring. For, for Easter. Easter. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Bring my sink away, Laurie. <laughs> All right. So the very first step to doing a cinch bag is it's going to stitch a stitch across the top. And that is your very first place you're gonna cut. Yeah. The very first thing you're gonna do is cut right yeah. directly on the line. And we're gonna have okay. you cut that. We're gonna use this opening later uh, when making the bag because the really cool mm -hmm. thing about these cinch bags is they're fully lined. It's not just a front and a back, but it's fully lined and there's a casing. So it's really mm -hmm. fun. And you wanna cut just a little bit beyond the stitch line so that you have room to fold your fabric through um, to make your cinch bag. Okay. Sweet, all right, then we'll put that back in the machine. Okay. And we're gonna do step number two. Now step two creates uh, your, your yep. placement line for the next piece of fabric, which, oh, came on through which the fabric is just right over here. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, technical difficulty here. <laughs> it came in. Um, this is real life. Yep. Yeah, real, real life, life right here. Real life. Let's see. There you go. <laughs> I'm gonna Let's get all tied up and his <laughs> in his dress. <laughs> All right, so now while this stitch is stitching out, it's gonna stitch out a box, you're gonna take your, I can get this apart, <laughs> first piece of fabric, which is the, there's actually just two pieces of fabric to this mm -hmm. bag. You're gonna fold it in half with the wrong sides together and you're gonna iron so that there's a nice crisp line across the top. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Brittany's gonna show you the purpose of that line in just a minute here. We're going to cover the box with this piece of fabric, but we're going to open it up when we lay it on here. And we're going to lay right side up, and she's going to align that fold with the cut that happened in the uh, stabilizer right up there. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, sometimes that can be tricky. I like to place my fingers right here on it, and then I lift it up, and I can see if I'm on that line or not. Yep, you're looking good. And then... You go, that's perfect. And then if you'll go ahead and stitch that next stitch, what the next stitch does is it does a box around it as well as a small basting stitch. And no worries, that basting stitch is gonna come out. We're gonna unlink that in a later, a later <laughs> yeah. step. Yes. Yeah, so when you're laying this fabric, you wanna keep in mind the two things. You wanna make sure that that crease is in line with that cut and that the fabric covers the whole box. So those are the two things you want to keep in mind just to recap. <laughs> and here comes that basting stitch. We want that to hold the top of this fabric down mm -hmm. while we're making our cute little design. Yeah. So at this point is when your design is going to happen. You want to pull that out for yeah. me, Brittany, and we'll show them. So I've stitched this design out already and the reason you want the design stitched out with this fold open is so on the back 
when you tuck this through, it covers that. So you don't see that inside your bag. You're actually mm -hmm. only gonna see the lining. So the next step, which is the, the for this particular pattern, it's just these cute little dandelions. Mm -hmm. um, it could be uh, the cupcake mm -hmm. or the pennant, whichever you're deciding to do. And so once you've got that stitched out, you're gonna stitch mm -hmm. up the two buttonholes and I did those ahead of time simply because I wanted to make sure fray check is so important at this step. <laughs> yes. I would put some fray check and I put fray check both on the tops and the bottoms. So when you cut those buttonholes open, you are not left with frayed stitching anywhere. So I'm gonna let Brittany go ahead and make those cuts. She's gonna cut those buttonholes open at this time. Mm -hmm. The reason we do it at this point is and we put this to the back, that's creating that casing where your ribbon is gonna be slid through to, to create that cinch bag effect. And so if you were to do it later, then you wouldn't have, you'd have a hole in the back of your yep. casing, <laughs> which we yep. don't wanna have. All right, so now at this point, um, we're gonna go down one more stitch and we're gonna tuck that through and that's where that 